But in today's video, we'll, we'll, I'll show you how to clean this stove. You're gonna need a ash vacuum. Make sure it's an ash vacuum. Um, do not use any regular vacuum because you will cause a house fire. Falls upon us, it's getting kind of cold. So what I have here is a Harman uh, insert pellet stove, it's cast iron. Pretty heavy duty, so this used to be a real fireplace. So they, what they do is they, they sell you an insert, which is this. Um, uh, I'll, I'll flash it across the screen how much one of these go for, but this is like kind of old. This house was uh, built in 2006. It was put in the insert, it's probably put in a couple years later. Um, so it's been a while. It's not the fancy ones, but this, this is all knobs and stuff. It's not digital like the new uh, Harman ones. So these are all turnkey style kind of type of deal. But in today's video, we'll, we'll, I'll show you how to clean the stove. You're gonna need a ash vacuum. Make sure it's an ash vacuum. Um, do not use any regular vacuum because you will cause a house fire. So in this video, we'll show you how to clean the stove from the back to the front, the whole spiel, leaving you the cost savings of $199. This is what, usually what I pay for this. It may vary between different states but this is a cost saver. If you're new to this uh, channel, we'll talk about personal finance and cost savings. This will be a cost saver. You do this yourself, you can save you 200 bucks, 199. So let's get started. All right, just a little background on how a pellet stove works. Um, so you feed a pellet through the hopper here. There it is, the Harman iron cast iron one. Put it through the hopper. You can see there's some pellets. So what happens is um, it burns using those little compacted wood. Basically those are uh, cord wood, or you want to call it that. Little pellet size, very tiny. I'll pick one on, I'll show you how tiny they are. Very tiny. And I highly recommend getting the premium band. It's a little more expensive, but I assure you, you will thank me for it using a, a premium brand. And I don't, I used to buy these from Home Depot Lowe's. Do not use those, pro tip. Those are the cheap ones. Even if it's the premium ones, it's still not good. What you want to get is the ones that, uh, like small businesses that carry those, like specialty shops to carry the premium ones, those are the ones you want. And trust me, um, I'll explain in the next clip why you need those kind of premium pellets. So it goes in the hopper, you kind of have to feed this hopper. Um, I only feed it like once a day, twice a day. It gets really cold, but otherwise you fill up to the brim, let it run all day, and you don't shut it off. Um, it has a uh, backup system. So the way the backup system works is uh, if there's no air being sucked out, it automa automatically sets, shuts down. So that way you don't have carbon dioxide coming in back into the house. And as always, if, um, you know, for safety issues, I highly recommend getting a CO2 detector throughout your household. And there's mine up there. And I bought this cheaper one um, from like Lowe's Home Depot's battery operator. I get a ladder up there and it's, you know, how we can get the, any CO2 if, if it, there's any. If this light is not on, this will not turn on. This is kind of smart in a way. Uh, different dials. Uh, I usually set it to um, stove temp. The uh, reason I don't set it to room temp because the room can get fluctuate and get cold. But if the, the stove stays at a constant temp, then you're less likely to burn pellets. Um, so different temperature settings, self-explanatory, it's in Fahrenheit. Um, you can convert it to Celsius, whoever was watching this in other countries. And then they have a feed adjuster. So I usually set it at three, three and a half adjuster so it's I think it's based on three minutes of one time you know just keep feeding the machine or feeding the hopper so the way pallet stove work is um, it's using a existing fireplace which I have here and it exhausts is out to the wall um, I've seen ones at Lowe's Home Depot those standalones where you can just basically sit a, set it on on top of a fireproof um, base and then basically drill a hole into any of your walls, whatever size, appropriate size hole is, and exhaust is out. That's it. Um, it's not too complicated because it uses uh, pellets to burn. So as long as there's an exhaust system, you're not worried about having calcified um, exhaust being built up in the chimney or something. But, but mine is an existing uh, chimney or fireplace. So I usually I'll use a, um, a little brush to clean things out. Uh, and that's what the professionals use anyway to have a stick that's really long if you guys um, can remember back from Mary Poppins the guy uh, I've got a guy's name that was singing the song he had a stick that each stick was getting longer and longer because he's snaking all up to the chimney that would clean up the whole chimney that way if this was a real fireplace you would need to do that but this is a pellet stove a little bit different it just burns little pellets and it just exhausts out so some tools we're gonna need here again you need a ash vacuum do not get a regular shop vacuum 
you will create a fire in your house and you'd be very sorry. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. And this is the, the way I'm doing it. So I'm not a professional by any means. Uh, if you're not unsure how to do this, I highly recommend getting a professional to do this. I'm just showing a way to do a cost savings. So tools you're gonna need, ash vacuum, usually comes with the different type of adapters, a small brush, angled uh, tip, and flexible hose. And use a um, <clears throat> pry bar. And you get you can pick this up at um, Walmart. You know the different sizes for a pry bar, a flathead, um, a pair of pliers, a hammer. So this you do really definitely need. Uh, I got it from Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below. If you haven't figured it out yet? I have sponsorship from Amazon. So if you guys use any of these links below, it helps support the channel, makes the channel grow, brings you more different content like this. So that's from Amazon, this little um, chimney sweeper and a duct tape just to make sure that doesn't fall out as a snake all the way up. A pair of gloves, highly recommend N95 because if you're cleaning this stuff, it's gonna be blowing out dust. Uh, put a mask on. Uh, a pair of gloves and here also I got from Amazon, a DeWalt flashlight, very bright uh, LEDs. So I recommend getting that. A drop cloth, I used to, I happen to have a old tablecloth I'm using as a drop cloth because I don't want to scratch the hardwood floor as this insert will actually be dragged out when, if, when I clean the back and maybe extension cord. So to open this, you just pull this latch here, unlocks it, pulls out. So um, we're gonna clean this out, we're gonna scrape everything out with a scraper and use a plumber scraper, uh, a flash it across the screen. Um, they usually use it to clean like pipes with it before they solder but I haven't used it to clean this, these stuff up. So it, it works well in that manner. Uh, these bolts will be unscrewed by hand. You pop these off and so it goes for this one too. So this is the ash catcher on the bottom here. So you want to unscrew those. Um, it catches the ash from these vents up here as air is blown, blown in and it gets sucked up here and blown out here. That's where the distribution fan comes out. The great, these grates here. So all these things come off, this slides right out. Um, this plate comes off too, this northwest plate comes off, these plates come off, here's the ashtray you can empty out. So to unlock this, there's a little latch down here, to pull this insert out, if you can see, it pops right out, so that comes out like that, uh, as soon as the latch, so we'll do the same thing on this side, it's just a door to close, so you just pull out this. There's your latch, pop it off, and then it comes right out. So for cleaning the glass, just soap and water and wipe it dry. Do not use any Windex or anything like that. Just soap and water, uh, make sure you rinse it out and dry it with a paper towel. Don't use any special chemicals because the heat on this will cause some kind of burn and tinting of the glass, so don't do that. Um, yeah, let's get started. Might be a little bit noisy, we'll play some music and enjoy the, enjoy the music, my friend. Remember I told you these will come out and screw them by hand. You put them back to screw them up by hand. You don't have to go too crazy. Some people go crazy, so I got fair parts for that. Okay, I put these in the back. I don't lose them. Just catching the ash from the grates. Yeah. This slides up, up, and up. This hooks at the top, you can't see it, but there. For sure, this next this comes out. Go straight out like that. And these two sides. So just remember which one goes to which. This is the left side or the right side. Uh, the way this comes out is I have to take this tray out first. This is, uh, keeps it locked in. Handle down here on both sides. I'm gonna pull up and out. Now, there's one. Just pull down that way, it comes up. Right? The same exact way. So you can use these brushes that we talked about. So I got this from the welding section of Lowe's. So you can use these brushes and get this from the grill section, cooking grills, barbecue grills are still out. You can grab one of these and use to clean. And this is coming from the plumbing section. So you grab one of these to clean. So you can do some crispy salt in brown. Down here. This is where this comes in handy. You kind of get it between here. 
And this I got from Amazon, we talked about these little ones here. It goes in between these. All right, all put back together. So that's all back. Um, the two left to right grates, the Northwest um, heat deflector, the little slider, the catch basin for the uh, grates, the ash pan, and the logwood holder. Here's the clips I was talking about. So underneath here, there are clips that hold this in. Right there, right there. That holds um, both left and right grates in. Keeps this part in, this part keeps this part in. So that's what I was talking about as far as the grates. All right, next we're gonna pull out the pellet slope insert and I'll show you how to do that. You uh, take this bottom piece out first. That way when this slides out, this lands on this bottom piece you'll see in a second. Why well, you need to pull this out first. That way it lands right about here. You need to pull and slide the insert out. This is just an aesthetic, but it does help as far as like keeping the door closed and that way you can slide the top, no problem. So I'm gonna let it land right about here. It's pretty heavy, folks. All right, this is what it looks like in the back. Like I said, this is gonna be a real uh, fireplace, so you can see the burn marks, but they put this in contraption here with the uh, rails to keep this insert in there. A couple things to note here because their Harman's pretty smart. They know you're gonna take this out in and out. So they made these quick connects. So all you do is just gonna disconnect this. Any of these so you can give yourself some more working room. And then you can pull this whole thing out and vacuum this whole thing up. You can see it's pretty dirty here. Not bad at all actually. So again, remember where you unplugged all these wires. Looks like green goes to green, green goes to here actually. Right here. Right down there. See that? Was there. Uh, white goes to white here. Uh, black to black here. Blue goes to red. And then uh, blue goes to black. So what? But that is just a temperature probe for the stove. So I may not need that, but the other stuff is, is it, it powers the, the hopper motor right there. Very low energy usage. Like I said, this thing is pretty efficient. Um, highly uh, recommend getting for a room that's really like mine. Mine has a vaulted ceiling, so helps heat the house without uh, cranking up the oil heat or the force hot air that we got at home. Clean out the exhaust here. Here's where I talked about com the combustion fan here. I have changed the combustion fan before. It's easy. Uh, there's a couple of bolts that hold it back there. Uh, and they sell this on Amazon, believe it or not. I'll leave the link in the description below. It comes with the uh, fireproof foams. Don't buy any regular foam. It has to come fireproof foam. So this is the one that came with it. So I switched that out. Talked earlier was a distribution fan. In essence, it's underneath here. To get to that, a little pro chip is um, put a couple pillows here and flip this um, face down and you're able to get the, the, the distribution fan. I let the glass sit on the pillow that way it doesn't break and you're easy, easily able to work on the fan without any problems, okay? So another thing that the uh, sensor probe, it tells me to set the temperature of the stove. It kind of has a little temperature probe here. So you can get that at Amazon, link in the link description below. Kind of insert, inserts here and you sneak it through and then it connects to the, the panel we saw on the other side. I'm also gonna take this off. This is the hopper um, cover. I'm gonna screw that. Usually there's nothing there. Um, it, it drops the pellet into the uh, burner, burner pot. So this separates from the top hopper to the bottom hopper. This so this separates. And like I said, it's a time system where it, it just comes out, the cover comes off. As you can see, it's pretty clean there. Those are the uh, remnant ashes from the uh, pellet. Right there, so pretty dang clean. I'm just gonna back it up, clean it up. Um, here's the slider, metal slider that lets the uh, new pilot go in and then close right back up. It separates the top hopper from the bottom hopper. All right, here is the exhaust. So, this whole thing is just being exhausted with that. Um, looks like a four inch tube exhaust as it goes up the chimney. That's it. 
We're gonna use the uh, brush, the chimney brush uh, from Amazon, which I have here. I'm gonna snake it up, go do it a couple times. If you'll see it fall down, and we vacuum it up, and we're done. Most of the ash just sits right about here. Looks like a exhaust for a dryer. To go that way. So there it is. So it goes up the. So people talk about the flume door. That's the flume door. If I had a real, uh, which I do, a fireplace, but this is always kept open because the door is being occupied by this hose. All right, here's what I was talking about. I got the. This is my area, the Northern Warmth Douglas Fir. It's a it's a 40 pound bag. It's like I said, it's from one of my local um, pellet stove places, not from Home Depot. And this is the reason why I, I recommend you going with their brand versus uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. So you know the grade is better. Uh, it's a premium grade hardwood um, pine. I want to say no fir, Douglas fir, which is pine. Um, they use it for other things: animal bedding, heat, moisture, absorber, and recyclable. So basically, um, it has all the uh, the numbers that you want here. Uh, is what you're looking for. Less than 0.5% ash, high BTU value, less than 5% moisture content, very low chloride. So basically, it's all natural. It's just um, basic softwood, 100% West Coast. So this is what you want. You want to get one of these premium brands. I know it's a little, a little bit more money. So uh, a pallet comes at 25 bags per pallet. Uh, for this season, it's getting more expensive. It used to be $4.79 per pallet. Yep, $479 per pallet. There's 25 bags per pallet. But this season, so it's, it's getting expensive. So it's $4.99 per pallet for 25 bags. So it works out to be $19.96 per bag. Um, I know for Home Depot Lowe's, they're probably $14. Extra $5 will save you the headache of having to clean that many times. So what I'll do is I'll burn down one pallet or one uh, 25 bags of these and then I'll clean it in between with the uh, shop vac and do it all over again and usually I use up to two and a half pallets of uh, uh, pallets for the season because uh, I live in uh, the northeast it does get a little bit cold but not as cold as our uh, neighbors in uh, New Hampshire and Maine so a little pro tip uh, when you're refilling these hoppers I recommend you put it into a aluminum bucket you can get one of these at any of your local hardware stores um, I usually pour this into here and then I put a cover and keep it inside the living room, the family room. Um, because when this is hot, you don't want to put, put a bag next to this, it'll melt the bag. So I usually pour it into here and then I pour it into there. And I know it's two steps, but it saves the headache of burning your bag. Down. I usually don't go all the way to the top. It has a little bit of breathing room because it'll suck air into the, the hopper and it keeps it burning. I kept this from last season, so it was about Two and a half, three. You can go to three if you want. I have this set uh, room temperature around 60-ish. And then we have it on the uh, stove temp. So to turn it on, it's just a simple matter of turning this dial to make the hopper, the feeder they call it, come on. The distribution um, blower will come on when it heats up high enough. Status usually flash, or I mean stays green or red. We'll see in a second. And combustion blower should always be on because without that, you don't want to heat this uh, pellet stove on without being exhausted out. So I got it about that much. It's on low. Here it is. So the status lights are red. Everything's working. Combustion blower is on. Feeder motor is on. Igniter is on. The igniter will eventually shut off because once it ignites down there, then we'll, we'll see that um, the flames come on and the motor, the feed motor will come on intermittently. I want to say every three minutes to test. I'll basically give it an extra boost. You just turn this knob all the way to the left. It says test. The feeder will spit in, the exhaust will uh, be a little higher than normal. But here's the feeder. Let's see what that looks like. So there's the pellets coming down from the top. So my pellet's a little bit older. Uh, it takes about 20 minutes to spark. But there it is. You can see the amber coming on. You can see the initial smoke. That's all totally normal. Just because it's uh, cooler in there, it's creating heat. So it's basically just condensation inside the 
the glass, you can start to see the smoke now. But there it goes, sucked out by the uh, pellet. I say I keep this on uh, from October all the way to April. I never shut it off. Um, obviously, if I'm on vacation, I shut it off. Otherwise, if I'm in and out of the house and I work all day, just keep it on. It's pretty safe. Um, as long as you have the, the CO2 detector and the combustion fan, and we, we sh I show you the sensors for that. It's a little trouble troubleshooting if your pellet does not start. They do sell liquid igniters you can put a little bit of liquid igniter on top of that uh, it might be your igniter um, you may need a new, a new one of those you can see the igniter should be off by now the eventually will come off you won't need the igniter anymore as soon as the fire comes on so that come off there's the feeder that's just this should fan on comes on when um, when there's enough heat or there's a lot of heat being blown into the room Otherwise, there's a constant small amount of heat being um, brought into the room. So that's a couple of troubleshooting issues. Uh, your knob may be replaced, your igniter may be replaced, or your temperature exhaust on your combustion fan may need to be replaced. See, now the igniter's off. That may be because the fire's already on. It senses the fire working. And you can see there's a lot of smoke in there. That's totally normal. And you can see it's actually being sucked out. The smoke's being sucked out up to the chimney. All right, that's um, a couple of things you can look at. Um, you know, I wish they can have smell of vision because now I can feel the heat coming at me right here, right in front of me. Um, uh, pretty natural wood heating. All right, if you like this kind of content where I talk about personal finance and cost saving, this is a cost saver. This would have uh, cost you uh, anywhere from 250 to 199. Um, they had a special to clean this out for 199, but I just showed you how to clean it yourself using the uh, shop vac and doing stuff yourself using simple tools we can find at Lowe's or Home Depot. All right, have you subscribed to the channel. I'll see you next video.